The <coughs> Minister for Industry, Innovation and Science, Greg Hunt, joins me. Now, time is ever precious in this 45th uh, Parliament. Absolutely. There could always be a division at any moment. So As we speak, Anthony <laughs> Albanese is filibustering to yes. allow us to do the yeah, Well, thank you, Anthony. I mean, you must have some kind of pull in this uh, Parliament, Greg Hunt, if you've got Anthony Albanese doing that for you. I think it's you. more you than me, but anyway. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Now, how important was it for the government to get this big win up of the omnibus bill and, and support through the parliament? First and foremost, it was important for the country. Mm. This is about $6.3 billion over the forward estimates that will never go on to the debt bill. It's about uh, close to you know, $16 billion, 1% uh, of national GDP, which will never go on to the debt bill. So yes, it's good for the government. Much more importantly, it's part of our great national task. And Labor was dragged kicking and screaming to this position. Sure, if you're Sam Dastyari, you can ask the Chinese to pay a personal bill. If you're Australia, you can't ask China to pay that bill. We need to make these savings, not for any other reason than that it's simply leaving the debt for the kids and the grandchildren to pick up. You say Labor kicking and screaming, but the government's had to make some concessions here, four in total from the uh, original uh, proposition. So is this a sign of how this 45th Parliament is going to have to play Look, uh, uh, more pragmatism, particularly uh, uh, from the government? I think it's an outstanding outcome. Remember, the original bill that we put was Labor's savings. Every one of the measures we put was savings that Labor banked at the election, and even then they were forced to do it, mm. Uh, the Treasurer and Scott Morrison and the Prime Minister and the Coalition pushed them to that position. But then they wouldn't even bank their own savings. Well, we forced them to find other savings commensurate. What does it mean? It means less debt, less for the grandchildren to pay off. Um, it's our time and our moment to make these savings, and this is the hallmark of what the Prime but Minister was, is seeking to do. It was do. important for you, the government, to demonstrate to the Australian people that you can make this 45th Parliament work. Sure, of course we can make the Parliament work. But this is in, a first demonstration of that. It, it's a signature moment mm. because this is the government showing that it's governing. It's a signature moment because it's $6.3 billion now, but you know more than $16 billion over the next 10 years, which will never have to be paid off by our children and our grandchildren. So it is structural in a way, but can I look at uh, some of the climate... Well, these are deep long-term yeah. savings. Some would argue that you need to look at more uh, structural savings in the budget, and I know the repair job isn't finished there. But if I could look at the climate initiatives here, you've had to keep a, a fair chunk of the arena funding. So will this affect the Clean Energy uh, Innovation Fund? Will it, will it suffer as a result? Look, I'll uh, obviously leave that for the uh, mm. uh, Finance Minister and the Environment Minister. I know the Environment Minister is sitting down with his counterparts, so yep. they're going to be discussing the details. The net result here is that uh, there'll be some balancing between the uh, Clean Energy Innovation Fund, which was yep. debt and, uh, and equity, in other words, loans and investment well, by the, the Commonwealth. that's the whole point here, isn't and it? And in, in return, uh, there are more grants. But what isn't made up for here in savings is made up for elsewhere. So the big picture is that there are structural savings. Mm -hmm. That would have, in fact, been a one-off saving, whereas it, what Labor has compromised on with us is permanent savings. So not just once, but each and every year. So it's actually a, uh, a better outcome as far as I'm concerned. But, Mr Hunt, it seems unusual to me that, it, that the government didn't really push this line because the Clean Energy Innovation uh, Fund is, is different to ARENA. It doesn't just hand out uh, cash. It makes sure taxpayers essentially have an equity stake. Surely that is sure. something uh, that would resonate with many uh, Australian voters. But the government didn't seem to push that hard. Well, this is a case of uh, achieving the savings. Mm. Uh, and to do that now is very important. Of course, Labor banked the uh, billion dollars of uh, arena savings only 10 weeks ago. So Labor went to the election pledging to make those savings. Mm. Now, they walked away from it, uh, but they were willing under pressure to compromise on other savings. So we're perfectly happy to achieve that outcome. At the end of the day, what will be the hallmark of a Turnbull government achieving things, and uh, mm. there's always a negotiation. The, s the nature of the Senate is we can negotiate outcomes with the opposition, with the Greens, or with the crossbench, and uh, we'll just seek to find ways to do that. There hasn't been uh, such agreement when it comes to same-sex marriage plebiscite. Is it now patently clear, from the government's perspective, from mm. your perspective, someone who 
would be in the yes camp. Yeah, uh, look, I'm a, a yes voter, clearly. Is it a plebiscite or nothing? Look, I think uh, it's absolutely clear that the pledge that we took to the election and for which the Australian people voted was to give the Australian people the choice. And this is a rich, noble, democratic concept. Mm. Not only is it honouring our election mandate, which the Australian people voted for, but it's honouring the Australian people. It's trusting the Australian people. And just to quote Bill Shorten, only a couple of years ago, his words were, but in terms of a plebiscite, I would rather the people of Australia could make their view clear on this than leaving this issue to 150 people. So he believed fundamentally in the principle. So his opposition now isn't that he's afraid of a no vote. The disgusting, venal, low approach that he's taken is he's afraid of a yes vote. He doesn't want to give Malcolm Turnbull the victory and he's willing to sacrifice the cause he's pretending to believe in. I think this is an absolute disgrace. And if he really cares, if he really cares about this issue, he would support a plebiscite because he supported not just a plebiscite, the principle, the morality of it, only a couple of years ago in front of the Australian Christian lobby. So I don't just support this. I believe in it deeply. And if Labor wants to support same-sex marriage, this is their moment. What do you say to the likes of Dean Smith, who was... Once a, a no voter for changing the Marriage Act, he has a, a, a personal uh, sure. interest in this and he has said today that he cannot stomach a plebiscite. What do you say to colleagues? Look, at I respect voter? his views deeply. Uh, the point about Dean is he has a genuine principle. Mr Shorten advocated in front of the Australian Christian Lobby a plebiscite and in fact he advocated the principle of a plebiscite, he advocated uh, the belief in this. And sure, he's entitled to change his views, but he's only changed his views by convenience precisely because, as I said before, he's not afraid of a no vote by the Australian people, he's afraid of a yes vote because that would take away his issue, which is a disgusting betrayal of the very cause. And for me, that's an utter failure of character. He, this is his moment. If he believes in same-sex marriage, give the Australian people a chance because 70% of Australian people, according to Griffith University, want a plebiscite. And I think overwhelmingly, if given the plebiscite that they voted for at the election which, and which they want, they will vote yes. Minister, passionate arguments on all sides and you are certainly one of them as well. We thank you for your time on the latest and no interruptions from the House. Thank you very much, Anthony Albanese. <laughs> thank you.